Hi, welcome. Um, today I'm going to look at the pre-release version of MultiWii 2.3. Now this is the pre-release, but I thought I'd have a, a bit of a look at it for you today. Uh, I'll show you it a bit of it today so that you can get the jump on it and when it is in full release you'll be able to um, go ahead and use it. There's been a few um, big changes with it. A lot of the changes are in the background and how the code works and the algorithms behind it all and everything. And there's a lot of new features um, that probably won't be apparent to most of you. Um, but if you're into the serious development side of things, you're probably already following this on the, the multi-Wii uh, software development forums. So I'm not gonna go into all the nitty gritty of a lot of the features, but there are some, um, some nice new stuff. And for most of us, really what the difference will be is the fact that most of what you used to set in the sketch file, you can now set from the GUI. So pretty much most of you won't ever have to um, reload the file basically once you've updated the software you've reloaded it now one thing the first thing we notice with the file once we open it in arduino is that there are a lot more tabs available so um, you won't see the config h up here even if you get the window quite wide but if you pop down this little arrow here on the right hand side, you can go down this little list and click on config H. And I'm now going to enlarge that so we don't need to get a bit more screen size. So just this little corner up here, this little arrow pops up that little window, which you now won't see. Go to config H because that's the only thing you need to alter. Okay, a lot of it looks the same as the previous config H, but a lot, some of it's a bit different. So anyway, Here's one I've con already set up, and I'll go through some of the settings. Um, I'm going to assume you've played with this a bit before, but I'm going to go through some of the settings. So I'm going to set up a quad X as my copter type. There's not a lot of difference here, really, as far as the new models goes. Uh, 6H is now an old model, not a new model, but anyway. Okay, so... Uh, minimum throttle, max throttle, min command are all set here, but don't worry if you want to change them. I'll show you a trick shortly. So you don't need to change any of that. Your I2C speed, I tend to set to 400,000, but really uh, 100,000 is fine. 100K is fine for most people, for everyone really. Um, I just set it to 400K because I want to see if I can actually break things. Um, for both the Paris Sirius uh, mainboard and the Paris Sirius Air, I always set internal I2C pull-ups. In this case, I'm actually going to use a Sirius Air, and I'm going to show you the GPS setup, but I don't have a GPS module actually plugged into it, so I'm going to get I2C errors, but we'll ignore them when I get to the GUI. So you've got Sirius. Here we've got a couple of options for most of us. We've got the Sirius. Cirrus GPS, um, the older Cirrus 600, uh, the Cirrus Air, and the Cirrus Air GPS. So I've, I'm going to set this up as a GPS. Not that I'm going to use it as a GPS in this particular board, but I just want to show you some of the features when we get to the GUI because some, some really cool stuff has been added to the GUI. Don't have to worry about this section, which is if you're making your own boards. Um, Okay, now we come to the first interesting section. Section two, which is the copter type specific options. Okay, the first thing we come across is this. Define PID controller, which is preset to one. Okay, basically there's a new algorithm available which is considered experimental. So if you want to get experimental, you can change that to two. But for most of us, I'm gonna leave that at one. We have define your direction as one, don't have to play with this anymore, guys. Um, you can just leave that set because, again, your direction we can change in the GUI from now on. Okay? We do need to worry about how we're going to define arm, whether we're going to use your roll or both. Uh, servos, I'm not going to worry about at this point in time, this section here at all. 
not going to play with that whatsoever. Now, the next section we want to look at is the cam stab, the camera stab stabilization, the built in um, gimbal controller. For a servo type gimbal, somebody has asked me, no, you can't connect a brushless gimbal directly to the output to this board. I don't know of any boards that can. But I'm going to define servo tilt because now with version 2.3 I can have GPS and servo tilt running at the same time. But you notice for those of you who have seen the previous versions of the code, there's a whole bunch of stuff that should be here that's under this that's now missing. That's how it now is. So you're going to say, but how do I set up a servo? Wait. All the servo set up and a lot of the parameters can now be set in the GUI. So all we have to do in here is say, yeah, I'm going to use it. Don't have to worry about setting it up at this point in time. Okay. Don't have to worry about the helicopter stuff. I'm going to skip that. I will be using a summed input on this. So I have defined some, some serial input um, for Robe High Tech for Tarba. And that is also the same for the older style um, FR Sky receivers. The new... Um, Tyrannus, which everybody's raving about, is a different order, and I'm not sure what it is, but I suspect it will actually be that line above. Uh, but you can easily change the channel assignments in the radio anyway, so it may still be that line, but uh, I suspect that's actually going to be the correct line. Actually, no, it won't be. Pitch your no, it will probably be that line. Pitch, roll, throttle, your box one up to blah, 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 blah. So I suspect that's actually going to be the better line to select for your Tyrannus. I'll leave that for you to settle, settle yourself. Okay, not going to play with the Spectre inputs. The S bus still is a bit near, but it does have a new feature in that you can actually define the midpoint for S bus as opposed to how it used to be with the 1500. Don't worry about that at all. Okay, down here, if I was running a full six, uh, eight channel receiver or six channel receiver, I would define aux pin eight in, but because I'm summed input, I don't have to worry about that. Okay, a bit further down for the Paris Air, not for the normal Cirrus board, we need to define HWP WM6. We also have to define RC aux 2 pn d 17 And we also need to define Pro Micro 10. If you forget that line there, your LED, your Andromeda LED, will be reversed. It will be on when you're disarmed and off when you're armed. So if you find your LED is the wrong way around on your andrometer, that is the line you need to look for. I have covered that somewhere else. That is for the for the Paris Air, not for the full Paris board. You have to worry about that set that whole section basically. Right? If we're running a Paris a full Paris board, you don't have to worry about any of that. We've got some pin override stuff, which again, we don't need to deal with. We've got some alternate serial port setup. Again, we don't need to deal with. Okay, um, down here we've got the low pass filter section. Now with um, the standard Paris, we used to define ITG32 low pass filter at 42 Hertz. Right, with an air, we define MPU 650 low pass filter at 20 hertz as I have it set there. So for a full Paris board, we use that setting. For the air, we use this setting. Okay, scrolling down, scrolling down. We don't have to worry about special features. We do have an automatically increased throttle based on the angle of the copter here which is already set. This is only if you want to change the setting. There's an advanced head free mode. I don't play with head free, but if you want, there's a different uh, version you can play with. Um, AP mode at 40 is the dead band for the GPS. Um, 
which we've previously set, and that is actually the default setting. It's only if you need to play with it. Basically, when you're in GPS position hold, what that means is you've got to go beyond 40. So center point's 1500 on your sticks. You have to go to 1540 or down to 1460 before the airframe will move. Okay? And reposition. The fail safe stuff I do out of my radio, so I'm not going to play with this, but there is a new feature in you can define a threshold, a level at which fail safe actually triggers. That's a new feature. Not going to worry about LED ring. Um, Dead band is very handy. I'm now defaulting that to five on all of my airframes. I didn't previously use it because my radio is pretty good, but I'm but it's now being done set as a default, so I'm leaving it on. Okay, next thing we need to select if we're using the Paris I2C GPS is we need to define I2C GPS. Um, I tend to not run the LED indicator. You can if you wish. Basically what it means is the andromeda will blink really rapidly when you do have LED, um, a lock. Okay. Uh, mag declination. I'm going to set my default for my area. But again, we can mess with this later in the GUI, which is a really cool feature. Don't need to mess with anything else in the GPS section. The LCD, I can't run the OLED and a GPS on an air. There's only the one port, so all that stays undeclared. Scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. We skip all the necessary stuff. The out hold, new, altitude hold throttle neutral zone is preset to 50. Leave it alone. Um, and then finally we come down to the last section we need to pay some attention to define I prefer define motor stop some people don't mid RC is 1500 which is a default and the servo refresh is at 50 Hertz which is the minimum um, you can vary that if you want but you don't need to at all okay and there's a bit of LCD telemetry stuff further down for the ESC setup and there's nothing really else we need to worry about. So what we can now do is upload that into our controller. Don't forget to select the correct serial port and board type before you do so. Um, and I'll leave you with that for the moment and I'll come back shortly and have a look at the GUI itself and what's changed there. See you soon.